champions of milk. Welcome back. This is a similar build to my Spellsword Sellsword, but it's going to have some new quirks. It is a Crystal Magic Warrior once again, but it's going to be using the Breed's Great Scythe. And this brings some very interesting things to the table. For a dex with one, it has Hyper Armor on its weapon art. This can lead to some pretty brutal combos, and like the Spell Sword Cell Sword using those Cell Sword Twin Blades, it pairs extremely well with Homing Soul Mass for a lot of different reasons. The Homing Soul Mass can open up opportunities for not just whiff punishes and landing strikes at range, but forcing your opponent to roll and then capitalizing on that roll with this great weapon art that is quite good at roll catching. The disadvantage is the shittier run attack. So the one-handed run attack is not bad, but it's not quite as good as the Cell Sword Twin Blades running L1 at roll catching, and you can't buff this weapon. So a lot of power is lost on the running attack. However, the weapon art is sort of a, a running attack on its own. It leaps forward, it has a lot of hyper armor, and it has multiple strikes. So it's quite good at breaking the hyper armor of others. So quick look at the stats. Like most of my builds, I am prioritizing damage and survivability. And since this is a dex int, I've got a lot of damage to prioritize. I hit the 40 dex soft cap, which gives you quite a bit of damage, and then I go for the 60 intelligence true soft cap there with the way that the scaling on catalysts and everything work. So it's quite a lot of investment in addition to the use of the rings, but it is worth it in my opinion. Having an extremely powerful homing soul mass to bring to the table sets up your weapon combos and gives you that threat at range, even through shields, that this build really needs. So that's why it's important to make sure that you have both survivability and damage because this build is designed to make trades, it's designed to cast spells, it's designed to use physical weapons, and that's a lot of stat investment required. So it really helps to use that Pyromancer class, and the new changes to the Prisoner's Chain and the Ring of Favor plus three also make a big difference in this build. So I'm kind of glad I waited to get this out, but at the same time, I do apologize for the delay in this Freed's Great Sight build. So, since it had that 11th faith requirement and the pyromancer started with 14 faith i decided to put one more in there to give me access to medium heal and some decent support and healing miracle ability i was also able to get the attunement up to 18 for a modest three spell slots and 136 fp so the fp is obviously not this build strong suit but instead of focusing on having more casts and more spell slots, I wanted to make sure that the casts I'm doing and the spell slots that I have are working to their full potential, with the exception of the Heal Miracle, obviously. Uh, obviously, Freed's Great Scythe, Court Sorcerer's Staff, I like. Even if you're shooting dark spells, this is going to do better for you than basically anything but that uh, Crystal Staff. The Murky Staff was not doing more damage with dark spells unless I used the buff on the, ca on the Catalyst and it was still not a whole lot of extra damage. For backup weapons, the top two I'd recommend if you want something ranged, the short bow with its rolling and running attacks are going to help you sort of the way a Farron flash dart would, but with a little bit more utility in my opinion to be able to hold the shot if you need to, uh, or free aim it, quite useful. And the sharp dagger, is another great pick, especially on paper. It's got that incredible low weight, high criticals, great ability up close, which are all things that the Freed's Great Scythe lacks. Quick look at the rings. Ring of Favor plus three, as usual. It's that HP, stamina, maximum equip load, everything you want. And basically the same thing over here on the Prisoner's Chain. And with that big reduction it gave uh, to your defenses is kind of taken away now, I would say this is sort of a must-have and really helps to build out a lot and gave me a little bit more freedom with the, the stat spread compared to 
before the Ring City DLC. The Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring, also a must-have. This is 25% damage for your spells. So, if you want to be casting spells, there's no reason not to use this. And I also like to use it with the Young Dragon Ring, since it stacks multiplicatively. That's going to be an extra 15%, 40% total damage to your spells. Very important with the way defense works. In this game, there's flat defense that's applied to every attack you're delivering, and then a percent value. And the way that homing soul mass in particular works, like I said, it's very helpful to get as much damage as you can get. But this ring slot is a little bit flexible in case you wanted to fit something else on. So you could do your life ring swaps if you want, uh, or whatever works for you. So a little bit of flexibility there with the rings, but to be honest, not a whole lot. And looking at the weapon just one more time, like I said, the running pressure, not great. This running attack two-handed makes me very sad coming from Dark Souls 1, where it was so godly, that attack so godly. And so the, if you're using the regular attacks, one-handed is the way to go. A lot faster, a lot more range, a lot more utility. Uh, but two-handed, we've got our incredible, incredible weapon so that's going to help you out a lot and force your opponents to come into that with your annoying spells. And the only way to do that while two-handing it is with the Soul Mass type spells. So please take a look at my Caster Academy videos, if you have not, for tips for using those spells. And maybe check out my Cell Sword Twin Blade build uh, for basically a lot of the same tips of how this build operates, but let's get into the gameplay. So I wanted to do the gameplay section a little bit differently. Instead of talking about matchups like I do in my regular PvP list, or specifically techniques for using spells like I've talked about in a lot of other videos, I wanted to talk about the different types of PvP you can take part in. So in Free For All, this build is very strong. It has a lot of range damage. It has the ability to heal itself with moderate ability and it can do some good burst damage, but nothing incredible. So I rated it a 2%, just because it's not super duper powerful, either at range or up close. Similarly, with invasions, it's the same problem. You don't do as much burst damage as the Cellsword Twin Blade or a lot of other dedicated invader builds, which are really built on burst damage, a thousand plus damage. That's what you need when facing a host and multiple phantoms. Of course, you can still use the enemies, the environment, etc. to your advantage, but the lack of really strong burst damage, I gotta put this at a skin. Not the best at invasions. So let's get at what this build is strong with. Duels. Very, very good at duels, and it's also good at 2v2, which I'll talk about a little after this. But in duels, you bring so much to the table. You have a very good long-range weapon. You also have the ability to use a lot of very cool backup weapons with the decks that you've invested. And you've got your Hyper Armor from the Freeze Great site. In addition, we've got Homing Soul Mass. Just like with the Cell Sword Twin Blades, this is the best spell to use on this build because it can fire while you're two-handing your weapon, and there's so many advantages that come with that. The spell is also very fast to cast and has a great deal of defensive and offensive ability. You can use it in a lot of different ways. It also handles extremely well locked off. In fact, it's much, much better to use the spell locked off, which means that you can aim your roll catches a little bit better uh, once you get the hang of that. Using this scythe isn't too hard unlocked. The one-handed, it takes a little bit more practice, but the weapon arts, Using the weapon arts with homing soul mass does not take a whole lot of practice, even if you're not super familiar with playing ball lock on. So, definitely brings a lot to the table, particularly against smaller weapons. Though, if they can get in on you, something like a dagger in particular is very dangerous. And with ultras, you've got to be particularly careful, and of course, you can't use your weapon art as much. So, whole milk if you know how to bring the tools you have to the table at the right time. So in 2v2, I've got a video that'll be coming out after this where I play this much more offensively than in this clip, but in 2v2, you've got the ability to heal. And if you can coordinate with your partner well, you 
you are bringing so much to the table now because you've not only got hyper armor, you've not only got tons of range damage, but you've got that support function as well. So very, very fun build in 2v2, particularly if you're good at working with the party. So I'm going to definitely rate it a whole melt in 2v2. And I'm looking forward to sharing the more offensive brawl footage I got recently. That will be in my more general PvP playlist where it's just a lot of different random gameplays and commentaries using a ton of different setups. It'll be video number 69. Getting up there in those. So I hope you enjoyed this long overdue Freed's Great Spell Scythe video. Also consider checking out those Caster Academy videos if you haven't yet. Homing Soul Mass is a very important spell to use with this and when you've got those lasers firing off and you're spinning and winning it's just a whole anime out of 10 my friends. So thank you very much for watching, especially if you made it this far. I hope you enjoy the build, and I hope you stay milky.